I'm about to present to you five very important things. My favorite foods in China. So in case you don't know, I lived in China for most of 2016. Started in Nanjing, ended up in Beijing, had a chance to visit a bunch of other places, and I grew to love Chinese food. But there are some notable favorite dishes that stand out to me that I wanted to share with you today. So first of all, number one that comes to my head is Xiaolongbao. And I am sure you've heard me talk about Xiaolongbao in my Beijing and Shanghai video, but it is seriously my favorite food in all of China. So Xiaolongbao is soup dumpling. It's like a, a fresh dough that, that you make and you um, have to stretch it out thin. I'm not gonna go through the whole process Process, but basically primarily made of flour and water. It might have a little salt in it. I'm not completely sure. Then there's this meat mixture of usually pork. It's pretty much always pork with like a nice fat content. And then some scallions, I think, mixed in and ginger and garlic and soy sauce and vinegar. Is that right? I don't know. It's like a mixture of stuff. Really yummy tasting like meat stuff. So then you put a little of that meat in there and then you take a cube of aspic. A-S-P-I-C, aspic, which is meat jelly. It's not good for you, but it's delicious. So basically you have this cube of like jelly. It looks like straight up jello. And you put that in there as well. And then you fold up the dumpling, which is a very complicated process. And then you steam it. And then when you eat it, you burn your mouth no matter what you do. And there's a very particular way to eat it. So here is the step-by-step -step guide on how to eat xiao and bao. Number one. You get your sauce ready, of course. Sometimes it'll have a little bit of uh, ginger or a little bit of garlic in it, but it's pretty much just a combo of soy sauce and vinegar, more vinegar than soy sauce, and some chilies if you want, like some chili paste. So that's your dipping sauce. You got that in a little container right here. You're gonna wanna take like a little spoon thing. You're gonna use your chopstick, pick up the xiaolong bao very carefully, and then you put it on your spoon and you bite a little corner out of the top. And there's two ways you can go from here. You can either dump out the little soup in the spoon if you like, which is not a traditional way to do it. Or you can just let it sit as is for a little bit with the hole in the top to let a lot of the steam out. Doing this means you're less likely to burn your mouth. But the next step is that you just put the whole thing in your mouth and just eat it. And it's freaking delicious. It's basically like a tiny meatball with a tiny pocket of soup inside a tiny ball of doughy deliciousness. I really don't know how to describe it. It's really freaking good though. Number two, stone bowl cauliflower. I bet you didn't expect that one, did you? There's something extra magical about the super crunchy green stemmed cauliflower that you find in China. The florets are kind of more spread out and the stems are definitely crunchier and I like it so much more. I think cauliflower in the US tends to be too like soft and this is like has a nice fresh crunch to it. I asked my friend who used to do farming and she said it's just a different variety of cauliflower. Different regions prefer different kinds and they just develop these different varieties of foods. And this is the cauliflower that ended up in China. Don't listen to my tones and don't don't repeat what I'm about to say, but this dish is called gan guo hua cai. That just means uh, almost, I'd say at least 50% of the restaurants in China had this on their menu. Here's my description of it. Crunchy cauliflower florets are mixed with green onions, chili peppers, and Chinese bacon in a heavy stone bowl, par cooked in the kitchen, and finished up by a blue flame at your dining table. So one of the fun things about this dish, like I, I honestly would order it with or without this kind of like flair to it because it tastes so freaking good. But they give you like a little flame thing. It's usually like these weird blue crystals that they like light and then there's a flame. So it's like a sizzling dish at your table. Number three, Jian Bing. I wanna cry thinking about Jian Bing. I have such a soft spot in my heart for Jian Bing. It's just like the most common street food and it's something that I can actually successfully order in Mandarin, or at least with pointing, I highly recommend that if cow roe is available, which is the delicious grilled meat that is on that like spinning cone thingy, that you get the jianbing cow roe. Highly recommend it. It's always gonna be a little more expensive, but like 10 kwai, come on. So jianbing is actually so popular in China that it's spreading to Western countries. So I hear that they have um, a food truck for jianbing in Portland and in New York, and I think even LA. But in China, you sometimes, if there's like a big conference center, for example, I have this picture. It's a, con a big convention center in Beijing next to a big carrefour and an event of some kind had just gotten out and people were about to file out and there were like five Jianbing carts all right next to each other. 
That is how easy it is to find Jianbing in China. The Jianbing will come to you. But we actually did have a favorite Jianbing lady in Nanjing, and uh, you can see her right now putting a Jianbing cow row together. I miss her Jianbing so, so much. So the traditional Chinese Jianbing is a giant buckwheat crepe. So it's basically like, they call it the Chinese pancake, but it's really a crepe. So they take this like really watery, like kind of pancake mixture, they put it out on their flat top grill. They spread it out evenly. They crack an egg on top of it. They brush it with this like sweet, savory sauce thing. Uh, it gets flipped at some point. I'm doing this way out of order, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what this tastes like. And they fill it with some fragrant veggies, always cilantro and sometimes scallions or green onion. What's the difference? I don't even know. And then they take a fried flat piece of dough thing. And they didn't do this in Nanjing, but in Beijing, they always put black sesame seeds on it for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. In Nanjing, I noticed that there was a lot more like lettuce usage. And you get to choose a type of meat or no meat. It's up to you. And then they fold it up in this special way. I noticed the Nanjing style and the Beijing style were different because, you know, Beijing's north, Nanjing's south. So the food styles are very different between the two. <sighs> and then they like cut it in half and then fold it and put it in a little plastic baggie. And then you're just like eating it super hot and fresh on the street out of a little plastic bag. And it is so satisfying. <laughs> I've definitely had Jinbing that were really disappointing. So it can vary for sure, but I have to say, I've just got such a soft spot for Jinbing. Number four, I know this is a list of five. I wanted to keep it to five, but I couldn't decide between squid skewers, which you can see in this shot here. This is actually in Chuenjiao at like a street food market thing. And they did up some, some squid skewers for us and they were really, really good. I love grilled squid skewers. But I think what actually beats it out for the number four spot is gonna be Peking duck. It's less about the duck itself and more about the whole event of going to Peking duck. So there's there's people at the restaurant whose job it is to just cut up the duck. So they have these roast duck that are prepared in a very particular way that has been going on for generations. It's like a method that's been used since like the dynasty days of China. And so anyways, the, the waiters usually tell you that's your duck when they're cutting your duck up. I don't know why, but you know, it's exciting to see your duck get cut up because you're so hungry at that point. But um, they like slice it really thin and then they like arrange it on this plate and it's always really pretty and they bring you your plate and you can you can order half a duck you can order a whole duck it's up to you and then it's served to you with julienne like or matchstick pieces of cucumber and spring onion or maybe it's leek and then there's like this sweet bean sauce like a china it's a particular duck sauce like it's it's meant for a chinese roast duck um, but it's kind of sweet and thick it's like a thick dark brown sauce the thing i really love is the tiny thin little pancake things that you eat the duck with so you take this thin pancake cake you put the duck and the veggies and the sauce on it and then you roll it up and you eat it like that and it is so good number five this is the last one these are not in any particular order i probably should have said that from the get-go i guess xiaolong bao would be number one for me but the number five spot is definitely not number five on my list it's very similar to xiaolong bao it is jiaozi which is dumplings i freaking love chinese dumplings <laughs> There's always people who like hand make them fresh in like all the freaking neighborhoods in China and it's just so freaking good. There's so much labor that goes into jiaozi. I actually tried to make it before and it is so hard. There's a very particular way that you have to stretch the dough out and fold it so that nothing's really too thick or chewy. It's like a perfect like texture and the, the filling is like super savory, but, like balanced really well, it's so good. So all it is is really a, a flattened out dough that's rolled up with a meat or veggie filling on the inside. My favorite combos were pork and leek, such a classic in China, that's my favorite. Number two is probably chicken and mushroom. I miss Jiaozi. So that's it, those are my top five favorite dishes in China. If you are headed to China soon, you need to try these, you really do. And if you want five more suggestions, head to the blog post down in the description down below where I have my top 10 favorite Chinese foods. Thank you for watching today, guys, and I will see you. I'm actually taking Sundays off, so I won't see you tomorrow. I will see you on Monday. Okay, bye.